What's up racers, welcome back to the channel and another video on Gran Turismo Sport. In this video, unlike the video that I did last week about when is punting acceptable, you're going to see some white knighting. You're going to have to wait for it, it's in the second race, but boy is it justified. So, race C on the week that I recorded this, it's in the Group 2 racing cars. Group 2 is possibly my most hated of all of the groups of cars. I just don't understand them enough and I haven't put in enough time to get good at it. So actually what I wanted to do with this video was do a couple of last question mark challenges but I accidentally set an average lap so we're starting in sixth position. A momentary lapse of concentration and I crossed the line when sort of doing a couple of practice laps. But anyway, a pretty good start. We uh, overtook someone coming out of turn one because we got a better run out than he did. But uh, it's just going to get a little bit awkward, a little bit tappy as we come into here. The Frenchman then on the inside just uh, running a little bit wide and making contact and contact again. But we somehow managed to regain it and hold the slide and not spin around. Keeping our fifth position. So this track obviously very technical as well. And that mixed with my inability to drive this car at, well, a respectable speed in my opinion, uh, makes it very, very challenging. Probably one of my most challenging combos in the game. Bombing down the hill then, behind the Frenchman, into this fast right hand, are very easy to get wrong if you get on the power too soon, as you'll just end up in the sand trap over on the left. But we get through it nice and cautiously, and uh, that is a word that I would use for this whole last section. I don't really know how to drive through this section. You could go wide left here and then get a good cutback for a straighter line through these corners. Or you could have kept it really close on the right to the apex and sort of just uh, stuck closer, but I generally don't know which is faster. If you know what's faster, uh, I know it probably depends on the car as well, but mention it in the comments, make me better. Please, that's obviously why I make these videos, is so I can get comments from you to make me better. It's obviously a joke, sarcasm. Sarcasm. But looking ahead, they're going to go two by two into turn one, and that's going to slow them down. Look how much time I've gained. There's a little bit of contact there between the Frenchman and the Briton, and that means we are going to go up to fourth, and they'll be able to attack for third. He goes defensive, sliding over to the inside. Can we get the cutback on him and then go around the outside? I think the move can be done, but we execute it poorly and uh, get caught up on the grass once and twice, but we manage to regain it shifting down to first to get that traction and get the car turned in and stabilized we uh, stop ourselves from going off into the grass and losing a lot of time but we can still see him and we're not facing the other way so you know silver linings and all that something else with this guy in front he's got one bar of signal so he is just jerking just a little bit he is glitching all over he's gone really deep into the hairpin and with a better corner ourselves we see that gap closed right up and we are basically exactly the same position that we were a lap ago just a little bit more drama happened skipping forward to the end of that lap then just skipping out that technical section at the end nothing really happened uh, we see the coming into turn one the frenchman in second place he's going to make a mistake he's just going to run wide and get his tires caught up on the rumble strips on the outside and then the grass or the gravel which firstly invites uh, the brit up the inside and then we go past as well so one mistake has cost him two positions there as we go about trying to get past our dems underscore zero three deciding against the around the outside move but coming into here there's going to be a big network lag spike whatever it is and that's just going to punt him really really far in front of us and then he's literally just gonna run away look at look at the gap look at that gap I don't really know how he's done that but jumping forward to lap four the inevitable happens running wide in the technical last sector yep I was expecting this to happen at some point so I wasn't really too annoyed at myself I was quite impressed that I went nearly four laps without doing it initially but there we go we are down to sixth position and uh, the well, the slog begins trying to work our way up to the top again. So what can we do? The Frenchman in front of us, we get a better run out of the... Oh, and he's uh, deciding to go into the pits on lap four. So he must be going for a two-stop strategy. He, his tyres must be absolutely dead. I'm pretty sure that both the hards and the mediums were available for this race as we come past the Frenchman who's made an oopsie there and puts us up to fourth position. But you could go for a no stop on hards or you could go for a one stop on mediums. I think the one stop on mediums were faster uh, at the end of the race. So that's what we're going to do. 
Jumping into the pits then, obviously putting on the medium tyres for the second stint and not putting any fuel in, we've got enough fuel to last us a lifetime and look at that, there's actually a picture of Garfield on the side of the car, I didn't even realise what livery I was wearing but there you go, as we come out of the pits we're going to get passed by two cars and nearly an incident coming into turn one what can we do can we get a nice run out of the corner yes we can but the guys in front match the exit and uh, get away nicely so that is us going to be settling into fifth position Frenchman on the inside, a narrower line, that's going to give us the opportunity to do that cutback and we're going to try the move again around the outside of the Frenchman. Can we make it stick? Nope, he's just going to come across and I had to back out otherwise he would have run us off the track. Up the inside then, can we get a better X in there? He does, yes we can and uh, we've made the move stick so that could have gone very very wrong but we managed to make it stick and the decision to pull out when I saw that he was coming across to cut off that line around the outside was absolutely vital there. You know, I have said a couple of times in previous videos that decision making uh, has to be on point when overtaking cars. Try to get an understanding of what the car, what the driver is like in front of you. Are they going to run wide? Sort of try and read them. Like right now, I'm trying to read the two cars in front. What are they going to do? It seems like the Italian is a little bit rash, a little bit all over the place. So I'm going to have to be very, very precise when I'm trying to overtake him. Some other information that I'm using to judge what I'm going to do with the car in front is that he is on worse tyres. So as we came out of the pits, he flew by us. So I think I decided that I was just going to see it out to the end of the lap as he's going to dive in the pits as we come through the final two corners. Just being patient, just being patient and getting a nice run as he dives to the left and goes into the pits, so that's going to see us up to third position. But reflecting on that moment just there, that could have gone a lot different if I decided to try and overtake him in that final section of corners. I had the faster set of tyres, which meant I was faster on track, so the decision just to hold back and let him through probably saved us some sort of incident. You know, we could have been in the gravel, we could have got a penalty, whatever. Coming into here though, I break on my usual point, but I forget about the slipstream speed that I've gained being behind him and going to the back of him. I wait, I let him go back past me again, so, you know, being nice and gentlemanly, but we do both lose out on a position. Also, the Italian has caught up and one tap and another tap. Obviously, no regard for contact. This is a no contact sport, Italian. No contact. That means no contact. Obviously, we get the orange SR down. And a better run out of this corner, I see a gap and then I just muscle my way through. Sorry, dude, but uh, we're coming through. No harm done, though, and just another little orange slap on the wrist for us. Sees us up into third position. Can we go about chasing down the Frenchman in front of us for that second place position. Start of lap nine then, and we're coming into turn one on the outside, and for some reason I thought, let's go on the outside, this is gonna be a good idea. And it was all looking very good until he just ran wide and just run me off the track. He just didn't give me enough space, and rightfully so, he picks up a penalty. But that is a move that you can do in higher rated lobbies but you can't do it in these lower ranked lobbies and I don't mean that to offend anyone it just seems that the majority of drivers don't understand that when a car is on the outside they need space which then makes you have to drive differently you have to lift off and give them space you can't just go oh you're on the outside and I'm gonna keep my racing line it doesn't work like that I think a video highlighting that kind of move or that race etiquette would help so that might be in the pipeline for a future piece of content so coming around the hairpin left here we are in touching distance well not touching distance but we can still see them uh, of the old one bar Brit in front of us and there you go, the penalty has been served, but we had a couple of dodgy corners after the incident. Maybe that was down to dirty tires or just me losing concentration. So if we didn't have those corners uh, and we drove pretty cleanly, I think we would have been up and past him. But we're not, we're in fifth position and we have to deal with what we've got. So making sure we don't run wide and spin around like we did earlier on in the race. We sit behind the Frenchman and coming through this fast left-hander, we're gonna get a better run out. He obviously has to lift on the outside to stop himself going off and we're going to go around the outside on uh, the penultimate corner here and uh, getting a nice run out that's going to see us up into fourth position a pretty interesting move there diving to the left to uh, stop him getting that slipstream he reacts slowly so that's going to be good for us going into turn one and as we come into turn one we see the Brit in front of us he's ghosted out he is in the pause menu and look how fast the, his car is in the pause menu it's almost as fast as my car in a straight line and he's in the pause menu 
Uh, you might have to change that GT Sport along with the million other things that you need to work on. But there we go, tracking down the Italian and nothing really happened until the last couple of corners where we really closed the gap as he had a, a little mini moment there and nearly threw it away. But he has the better tyres uh, than us, but that's going to be it. Coming around the final corner, not going to be enough for second, but we are going to get that podium with a spin and a tap off and a couple of incidents as well. So not bad, not bad at all. You know, it was a terrible combination of car and track for me. So, you know, anything, any race that I move forward in, I'm, I'm kind of happy with as well. So this is what's going to happen. We're going to move on to the second race. It's going to be a much, much shorter race this time. And here it is, the moment you have all waited for through this video. I can hear you crying out for it. The white knight doth cometh very soon. So here it is. We are asking the question once again. When is it okay to intentionally punt someone? Yes, some people will argue that it should never be done and it sets a precedent for everyone else, but it's moments like this where someone has to make a stand. The Spaniard not breaking where he should do, bottles through two people, spins around the Hungarian and gives a penalty to the Italian. And here it is. I step up and I put him off the track. That is for you, Italian and for you Mr Hungarian and we just get an SR down we don't even get a penalty now obviously obviously I should get a penalty I have legitimately intentionally specifically punted that person off on purpose but the game I why why did the game not give me a penalty GT Sport please fix your penalty system I don't really know how else to say it it's just same record over and over isn't it but like always I want your thoughts your comments on that incident did he deserve it should I be shamed for punting him off let me know I mean I have my own thoughts and my own understanding of the situation but you know whatever so I thought I actually bottled the race here on lap two I just momentary lapse of concentration I guess and the German flies by me and when we finally catch up with him at the start of lap four we go for that classic around the outside turn one move that works so perfectly every time oh no we're just going to get another little bit of contact there but it's not going to be enough to put us off the track he gets a little bit wiggly on the exit and that sees us up into first position end of the race then nothing really happened uh, throughout the whole race and we're going to take the victory but that's not what the race was about the race was about that incident and i want to know your thoughts on the incident on the white knight hunt in my opinion i was quite right to do what i did i took a stand and i was willing to take a penalty to avenge those drivers who fell victim of Mr. Punty McPunterson, but when is the content creator in the right? Pretty much never. Uh, but thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, thank you again to the channel members. We are now over 20 channel members, which is absolutely bloody insane. So thank you so much for the support, and we'll see you in the next one.